Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and in this video I wanted to discuss what brown dwarfs are. Now they're not planets and they are not stars and before we discuss what brown dwarfs are let's just recap what a star is and also what a planet is. So stars are basically spherical objects made of plasma held together by self-gravity. So these are emitting light basically they generate energy in their core by fusing hydrogen into helium now actually there are there are a few different sorts of stars actually depending on where they are in the evolutionary path and they might not be fusing hydrogen in their core but a main sequence star the majority of stars in the in the, the main part of their evolution will be fusing hydrogen into helium to generate that energy now a planet so this is actually the international astronomical union definition of a planet and it mostly applies to planets in the solar system, but there's three criteria basically for defining what a planet is. Now, a planet orbits the, orbits the sun. Now, again, dwarf planets, asteroids also do that. So this is one of the criteria for a, for a planet that they orbit a sun or a star. Now, that's not necessarily always the case because we do actually have planets that are not orbiting stars. These are classified as free floating planets or rogue planets. And we found quite a lot of them. But for this scenario here, let's just consider that actually they're orbiting a star. Now, they also need to have a some sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium. This means that they actually are almost spherical in shape. And hydrostatic, hydrostatic equilibrium just means that any outward pressure force is balanced by the gravitational forces to the point that it's kind of shaping this spherical object really so asteroids some moons are kind of not spherical in shape but then we do have dwarf planets moons that are spherical so this is one of the criteria for what a planet is um but also yeah you've got these dwarf planets here so you've got Ceres and pluto here these are dwarf planets they're not planets they also orbit the sun so actually those these two here hit two of the criteria straight away However, the one that they, they typically fall down on is that they have to clear their neighborhood around their orbit. So they will not share their orbit with other smaller objects. Although this is not always the case because Jupiter actually has orbital asteroids, the Trojan asteroids, but it generally means that if they were in a disk, like an asteroid belt, they would have cleared that area out. Pluto orbits in the Kuiper belt. So again, it fails there basically. And this is where most actually fall foul of this actual uh, being a planet really is that most dwarf planets don't clear out their local neighborhood so those three right three criteria can be what define a planet although it's a little bit loosely defined in the sense that there are free floating planets that don't have stars but they would have initially probably formed around a star but they got kicked out so we now have the dwarf planets planets and um, brown dwarfs so the lower limit then basically is going to be your dwarf planet, then you have planets, and then the upper limit really is going to be a brown dwarf before we get close to a star basically. So what that basically tells us is that brown dwarfs sit in between a planet and a star, and we would quite typically refer to these as substellar. So they're not quite stellar size, they're below the size of a star, but they're also too big to really be a planet. Now, a star, as we mentioned before, do fuse hydrogen in their core, and the planets and brown dwarfs don't. They don't fuse hydrogen in their core. Um, that's one of the big differences, actually, between the two. Now, in a brown dwarf, the cores are not hot enough to fuse hydrogen. They just don't get hot enough. There's not enough mass there to basically do that. However, they are able to generate energy, but not from from hydrogen fusion, they do deuterium burning instead, which actually occurs at a lower temperature. So once they get to around about 13 times the mass of Jupiter and up to about 80 times the mass of Jupiter, they can actually use this as a mechanism for generating energy. So these are not going to be cold objects. They're called brown dwarfs, but it doesn't mean they're actually cold. They are hotter than planets, but they're just not quite as hot as a star because they can still generate energy in their core. So here you've basically got you deuterium burning. So you have deuterium, you add a proton, you get helium-3, and then it generates some energy, which is then released. 
And again, because this happens at lower temperatures than hydrogen fusion, these are still able to be reasonably hot. Um, and when we look at them, they're not actually brown. So they're called brown dwarfs for a different reason, but it's not because of their colour. And their actual colour depends on how hot they are, but they can be a deep red. And that is quite similar to some of the actual coolest stars that we have. So, for example, red dwarf stars can be just below 3000 Kelvin surface temperature. And a brown dwarf can be the same temperature. The difference here is their core temperatures. The brown dwarf has a lower mass, so it means the gravitational forces can't generate the hotter temperatures in its core to fuse the hydrogen. Whereas in the red dwarf, they're slightly more massive, they're more mass to them. So they can generate hydrogen or they fuse hydrogen, I should say, in their core to, to helium. And they are pretty much the same sort of colour, basically. So they can be quite hard to distinguish between the two. Now, their name, again, it doesn't come because they're actually brown. Um, it's because red dwarfs already existed. They already had a name. So we can't call them red dwarfs, despite the fact that they actually might be red. And we can't call them black dwarfs because black dwarfs are actually what a white dwarf will cool down to eventually. Um, so what do we actually call them? So they just went for brown dwarf because it kind of sits in the middle, really. But it has no relationship really to their colour, essentially. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, do check out some of the other videos.